This is AC Service Tech. I've had my own HVACR business for over 11 years. I worked for several heating and cooling companies before that. I teach high school and adult students heating and cooling, and I'm here just to share the knowledge that I've learned over those years. So sit back and I hope you enjoy yourself. On today, what we're looking at is a unit that's a little low on refrigerant. Uh, I'm checking it in superheat. The indoor evaporator coil has a piston, you know, or an orifice or the same thing does not have a TXV, so I have to check the refrigerant charge via the superheat process. Okay. Second today, what we're looking at is how to weigh 410A refrigerant into an empty and evacuated um, system here. All right. All right, that's the leak right there. If you can see it, if you can see the bubbles moving, you want to go above the oil stain in order to try to find where the leak is. Second today, what we're looking at is a uh, package unit where the compressor is not turning on. All right, so uh, the capacitor is good, the power is off. And now you might be asking why is the liquid line sweating? And that's because the thermostatic expansion valve is actually in the outdoor unit. All right, so we're getting ready to turn this unit on. It says it's roughly 82 degrees out. And as you see right here, we're at about 80 degrees at saturated temperature. All right, so that's why the pressure is at 234, 235 right now. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the electrical wiring inside of the condenser. Between zero and seven inch HD, we put in about a pound, pound and a half of refrigerant. This unit has 12 and a half pounds of refrigerant total. So that just tells you there's quite a bit of refrigerant, even uh, below zero in the inch HD. All right, today what we're going to be going over is how to check an inducer motor. So when you call for heat at the thermostat, you turn your button to heat, you turn the temperature up. Um, if at the control board you have 24 volts uh, from the W to the C terminal, this is the next thing that gets called. Right, so you actually have bulb pressure, external equalization pressure, forward pressure, and spring pressure all happening in order to make this TXV work. So if you lose your refrigerant out of this, it's not going to work properly. But if you do have refrigerant in this, you can easily confirm uh, that your TXV is not the problem. Now we have a single pole contactor here. This could be used for 120 volt applications or 240, but one of the legs is going to be connected. We have a target superheat of 18 degrees, okay? So in this scenario, we're charging a system that's using a piston, all right? And what you see is this right in front of the evaporator coil box. Presently, we have 55 to 56 PSIG. We follow that in, and it says 30 degrees saturated R22 temperature. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.